If you're a YouTuber, making money from content is what keeps you creating. It's obviously super important. And that is why I am incredibly excited to be partnering with Vuture on Unboxed. Vuture provides established YouTube creators with an upfront lump sum payment in exchange for future AdSense revenues for a set period of time. This means you can invest in your team, whether that's editors, producers, thumbnail designers, whatever you need to keep your content machine going forwards. Or alternatively, you can buy a new car or a house. So it's not all about keeping the industry going forwards. It's also about giving creators a great quality of life, which is what it's really about at the end of the day, right? So if you're a YouTuber and you're interested in hearing more, head to Vuture.com. That's V-I-E-W-T-U-R-E.com. Leo, thank you so much for coming on on Box. Of course. Right? It's been, been a while. It's when been a when was while. the first time we met? I think you were 16? Oh, God. It's a long, long time ago. And how are you doing? Very well, yeah. Good. Growing up a little bit, moved to London. Um, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. And um, what are you wearing today? I'm interested. <laughs> well, it's a hot day. I, I was gonna. I was in my like wardrobe room, and I was looking, and I was like, "What shall I wear?" But it was kind of worrying because when I've done podcasts in the past, like, <laughs> they get really hot yeah, when yeah, you're like yeah. constantly talking. Yeah. So I got my um, six pm vest on, got my Palace of Visu jacket with the matching cap, yeah, and then just some Carhartt shorts and my Louis Vuitton shoes. Very good. Yeah, they're very nice. Thank you. Um, so tell me, how did all of this start for you? You've been doing this for a long time. Now. I mean, how old are you now? Twenty. You're twenty. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been here for four years? Four, no, since you've been About seven years. Seven though. years? Yeah. So tell the story. Six How years. did you start in this world of content creating? What was the first post? What sort of kicked it all off for you? Properly, I was kind of, I was getting into it probably around 2014, 15, just wearing different outfits that I could see that I could afford at the time, kind of getting what I could get my hands on on like depop and stuff so it was just like little supreme long sleeves like the kind of the scraps that no one really wanted yeah. from the drop so like 50 60 pound ones when everything at that point was going for like thousands do you know what i mean so i was putting little outfits together and then i met my friends who are still my friends now through the basement who put me kind of into the group and probably, the facebook group yeah yeah the facebook group yeah yeah and realized that they could and me and them we could t together kind of do something fun here. So I kept going down to Supreme on Thursdays, literally every Thursday. Supreme Thursdays. Thursdays. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. What a, what a time to be alive, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You just had to be there. That's what I always say. Yeah. Um, and then I wore the Butterfly Gons tracksuit where I was just sat in a park bench, had the full tracksuit on, and it kind of just went crazy from there. And then every Thursday, it kind of became like a tradition where I'd wear the new stuff that came out and yeah. everyone would go crazy over it. It was back in the day when Supreme was like, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, like, for those who don't know or maybe don't remember, like, what was that hype about? Like, why did it just pop off? And obviously, when you were capitalizing on that in yeah. a reactive way every week, yeah. it just flew, right? Yeah, what was yeah. that all about? Yeah, yeah. I think, I don't know what it was. I just remember kind of it being this different world of fashion that, like, it's just not really a thing today, where people saw maybe a Supreme North Face jacket that was going to be difficult to get. I know back in the day, Supreme was a lot harder to get. I think recently they sold it, which yeah, made, yeah. yeah, I don't know the whole thing behind it, but yeah. now they just produce so many units so everyone can kind of get what they want. But back in the day, it was insane how hard it was to get things before they had their queuing system in place, before it got like really dangerous. And I remember the council got involved because of how like dangerous it got with people camping for like three days for a jacket. You could literally go into Supreme and there'd be one size small of a box <laughs> logo. So, yeah. and yeah. there was probably about 50,000 people trying to get that jump yeah. so the demand was crazy and I think I remember just having such a good circle and network at that point where I could kind of know that even if I didn't own it I could still put it on for the photo and yeah. people in America or like Japan Korea they saw me and they must have thought how is this kid <laughs> this 15 year old boy wearing this like every at 10 week. past 11 when it yeah. had come out 10 minutes ago and it used to just be such a funny thing and also something that people love to see and hated to see yeah and you say a lot of people liked, some people didn't like. Mm. I remember distinctly the first time I saw, well, one of the first times I really saw something about you was in the high, was it High Stabai or High yeah. Beast? High, it's probably one of the two. One yeah, of the yeah, two. Yeah, I remember the one of them did a feature on you when yeah. you were, when at that time. Yeah. And it talked about obviously the fact that you were, you know, basically putting yourself out there at such a young age yeah. and you were being bold with it and you were getting obviously a lot of positivity yeah. but also negativity and that was part of the spectacle of the whole thing. How did that, what was that like for somebody at your age dealing with that? Like, how did you get the confidence to keep going and to be, you know, bold in what you were wearing yeah. and putting yourself out there? Because it's hard for anybody at any age, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
God, it was it was a lot at one point. I think I think nowadays with the internet, it's it's weird because hate doesn't seem to be as big of a problem from what I see. When obviously I see people's now, like you have to be very controversial to get loads of hate. I think, in my opinion, but back then when I was posting mm. my Instagram photos, even just wearing like a jacket, didn't even say yeah, would <laughs> yeah. I didn't used to speak. Yeah. Like I used to do yeah. maybe one interview like every six months, and it was insane. Like if you'd have read my comments, I had filters on and stuff like that, but there was obviously other posts and videos about me from people like discussion threads on like reddit was crazy back yeah. in the day i i don't know i tried to ignore it as much as i could i'm luckily quite thick-skinned it never really hit me as much as it should the only thing that used to hit me is if i'd see people that i follow or thought were quite cool and they'd be saying something mm. that was a bit offensive because then i'd be like oh, shit yeah yeah, yeah yeah these yeah the people i like don't like me but if it was just a random person with no followers and a blank profile picture i was just like whatever yeah yeah, right. yeah fair and um your first paid gig the first thing that you did which turned this into i guess a career for you yeah. what was that because i think i was it, what was it a bit, it was a campaign wasn't it at the yeah, time yeah. So i remember it quite well it was this guy called devin devin kang i think he worked for some brand called conus and he literally just emailed my business email and was like i want to bring leo to LA and then Korea later in the year. At 16, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> what are the fees Fine. and how? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we, yeah, we made it happen. Yeah, it was it was mad. I just remember being like, how am I getting paid to go to a shoot for like a day and then have the holiday? It was so mind-boggling. Do you remember the me. fee? Uh, yeah. <laughs> At 16? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. And was it just, yeah. did it just kind of, at that time, yeah. was it just like, this is Yeah, it was, it was mad. It was mad. But then I also remember people around me kind of being like, that's that's just how it is you know what I mean that's not like that is obviously mad but it's not people are, that's just how this works and what did it feel like for you at the time obviously being so young having money coming first time obviously at school still, yeah right with yeah. your friends like what was that whole experience like navigating both sort of personally but then for the first time I guess professionally I think it was all about kind of not letting it get to my head because seeing my friends before doing all this I used to work in like this fruit shop or whatever and it was so weird how I could do this one job for like half a day and there'd be this kind of money for something that I love <laughs> yeah. doing as well. Yeah. And I never ever used to tell my friends because I remember like a lot of them would do like little weekend jobs and stuff like that. And I found it a little bit lame if I was to go and say, do you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm going to, just going to LA today. Yeah, exactly. And I'm getting a bag. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I just used to spend a lot of time at home and I still do because they, my friends around me keep me very grounded. And I think yeah. it's, I, I've seen money get to people and it's like a really... Mm. horrible trait do you know what I mean when that starts 100%. happening um, but it's at the same time I can see it's very easy to happen yeah yeah especially at a young age right? yeah definitely mm. like having all of this not many outgoings either because I still Staying lived at, at home, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and like not really and there was nothing really to pay for so it was just mm. all this money and then I could just have fun with it so it was just about keeping it as well not yeah. just like blowing it on silly things and what would be your advice if you're if a young creator today blows up and I think probably rarer now actually right yeah I, I would say and I don't know what your thoughts on that we could talk about it later about how you know relevance and for creators coming up today like I think it's, a, it's so different obviously with short form and everything else the money isn't there in the same way etc but um what would be your advice to somebody if they are young, they come into, you know, 16 to 18 years old, that kind of pivotal time in your life, and you come into kind of this being a full-time career mm -hmm. and you're starting to manage money. Like, what would be your advice having gone through it to somebody who's starting out? This is what I always say. If you have a good connection with your family, definitely put the most trust in them. Um, and if you, if, because my mum and dad were always so helpful with my money and kind of made me realise that, you know, you could just not get paid tomorrow for the rest of your life in this thing. Yeah. So whatever you have now, don't just think you're going to get this amount of money every week. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That kind yeah. of thing. Realise that you can't, it's not a normal nine to five where you have a contract you've signed yeah. where you know you're getting this amount of money a month. One month you could make this much and mm. then for the next three you could make nothing. So don't go about spending it like every day you're going to get the same amount. But at the same time, don't be too harsh on yourself. With it. Do you know what I mean? You've worked to earn it. Yeah. So have your fun, but be sensible with it and make sure that your connections and circle around you are trustworthy and also yeah. your friends and not just out to rinse you for every penny you've yeah, got. Yeah. But I know that's a lot easier said than done because it's hard to notice that. So just kind of over time, try and build a good circle that you can trust.
aside from from that, what was the kind of first like pivotal moment for you? What was what some of the first sort of pivotal moments for you in terms of working with brands, working on activations, like doing in terms of real moments that define that kind of early stage? What sort of things do you look back on and go, yeah, that was that was amazing? I can actually remember I was at home in Warwick. I think it was a Tuesday evening or like some midweek day, and um. I was literally just sat on the couch ready for school tomorrow and Cora rings me up and she goes... Who's uh, Cora for those who don't know? Uh, Cora's my manager, manager from the start, best friend at the start. She rings me up and she goes, uh, what are you doing this week? Obviously you've got school. She's like, what's the likelihood that you could miss a week and a half? And I was like, why? She was like, Converse just called up. Young Lean can't make the campaign. They need you in New York by Thursday. We fly tomorrow night. Do you reckon we can do it? And I was like, yeah. uh, <laughs> I, was like I ran upstairs. I was like, mum, what do I do? Yeah. She was like, well, what do we do? Like, you've, you got you, in the Yeah, morning, the global worry. campaign. Like, And yeah. she was like, we've, we're just going to have to go. Do you know what I mean? So... Mm. I think I remember having to go into school on Wednesday morning with my mum, like not in my uniform. And I remember them being like, what are what's you doing? Are you planning? pulling out? Are you leaving, yeah. like moving Aaron? My mum was like, yeah, he's not going to be in for the next two weeks and he, you're going to see it on socials. So we want you to know that he's not skiving. This is the situation. And I think my school at the time, they were like, well, this doesn't happen to any other kid, but if it goes beyond us and like the, I don't know how it works, or the council get involved because of attendance, like we're mm. going to have to, it's going to become a thing. But for them, they were like, just, well, you're going to go. So yeah, we can't <laughs> yeah, stop yeah. Were they relatively supportive? Yeah, they were supportive. I think at a point I was missing a lot of mm. school, like weeks out of months and like, it was getting quite bad. I remember there was mm. like big meetings of like high up people oh, from really? Warwickshire, like council and stuff like that. About Oh, they did it. So they did actually know. Yeah, 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 they did. Oh, wow. Because I think at a point, if you miss so much, I remember my mum and dad, dealt with, yeah, my mum and dad never wanted me to worry about it because I was missing school for a very good reason. It wasn't just like yeah, stupid. You're yeah, learning a yeah, hundred times yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> doing what you're doing. So I think at a point, like it does go a bit higher. And okay. The, the school, my school didn't want to, throw me out because I wasn't there but at the same time they were like this could go on to affect his grades but at the same time my mum and dad were like I think it'll be fine yeah, yeah. I think it'll be fine I mean what was it like for your parents as well I mean that's something which I think people sometimes overlook when they you know when they're going through this I mean what was it like you know for them to have to navigate as ultimately mm. your your guardians who were responsible you were under 18 they were looking after obviously you right yeah. at that age how were they dealing with it? At the beginning when I started doing it they they kind of only ever saw my platform. Maybe they saw the followers and they didn't, they kind of just thought it was a bit of fun for me yep. until Cora and Alex, Alex was my old manager at the start. Um, he came down and explained to them what was happening and the brands, even though I hadn't worked with the brands, the brands that had their eyes on me back at the time. Mm. Because even when I started, I think the influence wasn't so much of a thing. Do you Ooh, know what I mean? Cool. It wasn't such a massive thing like it is now. There's hundreds, 100%. yeah. So my mum and dad had never really heard about it. Was no it. blueprint, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no, they didn't see it on BBC News about, do you know how you do now about <laughs> yeah, all these things? It's not on TV, it's not real. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's yeah. I think the mentality they had. So as soon as the money started making a good, like I started making a good amount of money, they kind of saw it for them. That was mm. what made them, because they're old school, do you know what I mean? That's yeah. what they need to see to know that yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, it's a real thing, yeah. yeah, for sure. But they were good. They were really supportive. They let me miss a lot of school. I remember mm. my, my friends used to be like, my parents would, if I asked yeah. them to miss school, to go to a clothing sale, like they literally laugh in my mm. face. For sure. And then you get to New York. Uh -huh. And then what happened? We So we got, so we got <laughs> to the airport. Yeah. And we queued up. And I remember at this point, I'd done nothing like this. Like this was also new. We queued up. And we got to the check-in desk and the woman was like, oh, you're at the wrong check-in. And we were like, oh, here we go. She was like, no, no, you need to go down there. She was like, it was like business class check-in. And we were like, oh, okay. I was like, what yeah. is going on? Yeah. Obviously this like normal kid from Warwick. So we got there, woke up and like the Converse liaison guy who we were working with, he was like, oh, we're going to pick you up at 9am. So they were like, it's a global campaign with like Brock Hampton, Sage, the Supreme Skater. There were so many cool people on it. Mm. And Tyler, right? Uh, no, no, he, he, wasn't, it, he wasn't in the campaign, fine, but that's fine. at his, when he was like prime right, right, working right, right, with Converse. Right. Remember yeah. when the shoes were massive? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So got in the car and they were like, the shoot's going to go till 12. And we were like, oh shit, like a whole like 11, 12 hours. He's like, no, 12 p.m. So the shoot was two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, the dream. Yeah, like, two on. hours. Yeah. Shot the sh shot the campaign and then I remember me and Cora were like <laughs> really, really wanted to extend the trip because we yeah. love New York so we yeah. were like oh, do we ask if we can extend so mm. we just winged it and they were like yeah of course because that's at the point when the com the relationship was just starting so yeah we stayed in New York for like a week and a half had loads of fun and then that's where the converse relationship that I had yeah. for like 
a year or two really was like beginning mm. there. Yeah. And what was it like working with with a brand at that level in terms of, you know, you're talking global campaigns, yeah. that's the American team as well. Yeah. Like how did you navigate some of that? Obviously, you've got Corey there to yeah. manage and support it, but what was your interaction with them? You know, because it, it takes a lot to kind yeah. of navigate things with yeah. brands, right? It was definitely daunting. Like sometimes I'd sit in their meet the meetings and there'd be people like I don't even know the, the terms but I just yeah. knew that they were the people who could decide who gets a collaboration and right, not right. me like that exact person yeah. in front of me and I remember just walking in and being like right there's little things that my mum told me you can't be like this in, yep. this, in the chair like it's all about Posture, and, yeah yeah, energy, like, yeah. And I'd never I'd never had to think about at mm. 17 how to sit in like a board meeting do you know what I mean that was that was the crazy part yeah. of me and yeah. there's no one that can really teach you that because it's all about you mm. and how you go about it so I think it was just about remembering little things that people had told me, realizing that not in a big headway, but they were there for me to be there. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And kind of remembering that and never kind of being a little bit frightened and always knowing that yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah. like it's a mutual Have some deal. Confidence yeah, yeah, there. yeah. Exactly. Do you bring yeah. value? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. So it was all about that and just the confidence, like you said. And I guess I kind of winged it a little yeah. bit and it worked, it worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I remember seeing the buses, right, mm -hmm. with your face plastered around London, yeah. like they wrapped, those aren't cheap, you know, that's yeah. like 20k a bus <laughs> with your face on it. Because I know we've, we've looked into that, it's a lot of money. What was it like, like, you know, knowing you a little bit and obviously watching from afar, like that was such a big moment in oh terms of you, like, how that pro your profile just obviously went through the roof. What was it like sort of seeing your face? on buses like like did it kind of like did it ever get overwhelming for you at that point where you go this is bigger than me this is huge now I remember like because there was this built the do you know the billboard in Shoreditch I think mm. it gets promoted on quite a lot Great Eastern Street right yeah, yeah yeah the big the really really yeah. big one yeah I remember going it's a really funny story so about a year before that came out just in front of that billboard there's like a um just like a little walkway and there's a mm. wall next to it and someone had graffitied on the wall stop making stupid people famous and I took a photo <laughs> next to it a year before with a fidget spinner like a fidget spinner yeah, next to it. and yeah. then a year later the billboard was just behind it That's and hilarious. it said stop making and I was like whoa this is a bit like you know, like the yeah, day job yeah. was crazy and seeing that and then seeing yeah. that so it wasn't overwhelming because everything always with this industry, you have a lot of warning for it happening. So I think mentally I prepared because that was probably mm -hmm. about seven months when I was doing the campaign, they told me what yeah. the usage was. So I kind of knew in my head that mm -hmm. that was going to happen. So it was never like a surprise. And I think yeah. if it was a surprise, it would have been like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. And like all these people, like random people just tagging me in stories of them being on the bus mm. and getting off it and my face is on it. Because if you think about it, it was the route from King's Cross to Oxford Circus. I mean, again, the, an expensive route. Yeah. <laughs> they put money behind you, bro. Like, yeah, it was King's big. Cross to Oxford Circus, yeah. that route. And um, think so as, that, as yeah. it went through the middle of Oxford Street. Yeah. Essentially, yeah, like every day back and forth. And imagine the amount of <laughs> eyes that saw that every day. And it was really, really, when I thought about it like that, I never used to want to because it would be mm. really frightening. Did your parents ever see it? Yeah, my mum and dad came down to London to see it. My mum said she was like, stood at the stood at Marley Road she got on the tube got off and it was going past and she just started bawling out oh, crying on right. an Oxford Circus apparently everyone was like are you alright right, yeah. yeah, don't worry don't worry <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. and my mum's friend was like stop yeah, it like, you're embarrassing <laughs> yeah. so on to you now as, as well I want to ask how would you describe your personality and how do you think that it has shaped your career and how does it help you today God, I don't know that question. Because like, you know, as an really influencer and as a creator, right, your personality is front and centre of everything. Yeah. So I'm just, like, yeah, how would you describe yourself? I think when I read comments of, like, videos, interviews, people are like, oh, he comes across as actually... Because every single person I meet, like, mm. na even nowadays, if I meet someone, they're like, oh, you're actually really nice. And I'm like, oh, actually. <laughs> actually, yeah. Like, yeah. No, you because that? if you looked, they say to me, like, in the nicest way, even yeah. when I'm best friends with people now, like, I've just become friends with them, they say you I do think you're going to be a prick from what you look like from Instagram and like how you post and the stuff I've seen of you and I'm like yeah. I don't really understand how that <laughs> translates but at the same time I think it's because my account has always just been me wearing expensive clothes and yeah. if you don't go deep into looking for videos and interviews of me that's all you see and anyone you see just wearing expensive stuff you're going to be like oh they might not. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my yeah. face is in my account always, always just... Yeah. But also, I guess you have to be... To yeah. Like, the whole game is being confident. Yeah, exactly. And actually, like, captions, everything has to have a yeah. sense of, like, yeah. you're going for it, right? Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. guess that rubs, as you, as you say, rubs some people up the wrong way if yeah, it comes yeah. across as arrogant when, yeah. when actually 
Instagram has to be a, has to have that confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also exactly. through pictures, you're never going to get to know somebody. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But yeah, I think my personality is. I think I'm outgoing. I think when I first meet people, they say, "Oh, your energy," because it's all about energy, isn't it? Mm. and I think I'm not. I don't have this like standoffy kind of yeah. don't talk to me kind of thing. And yeah. But I wish it was easier to translate through photos, but I don't think it's a possible <laughs> yeah, thing, yeah. especially when you're doing posey ones where you can't smile and stuff like that. I, mm. I can see where people come from, but hopefully when they get to meet me or go into my interviews and stuff like that, you can see that that's not the case. Yeah. What interview that you've done, or what, hopefully this as well, mm -hmm. do you think best shows who you are to people? Well, yeah, I, okay, that was I a real think, good reflection. Of I think my Hypebeast one back in the day really helped because it showed me at home, me leaving school, me in my school uniform and people. I think it brought me down a massive mm. level to people and realised because when I used to po like even just say things on like my stories about going to school, people used to be like, you're capping, you don't go to school, like you're just doing this to be like, <laughs> yeah, you're just doing this to be like <laughs> relatable to yeah. kids, you know what I mean? And as much as I could understand where people are coming from, I think that interview showed that I'm a real person. And I did this basement campaign for their dunk shoe back in the day called yeah, Real People actually. Do Real Things. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that was similar to the hype we seen where they came to Warwick, we went and mm. fed the ducks, they, my parents <laughs> were in it. And I think those two for me, when I was about 17, 18, were perfect at shaping that I am a real person and I'm not lying about all this. I'm still close to my friends and family. Yeah. I still live at home. Back in it, just the makes, it just shows you really are. Yeah, makes you exactly. much more relatable. Yeah. Right. And I guess it goes on to the point, we sort of touched on it briefly, but, you know, as you've gotten older, how do other people's opinions, how does that impact you on a day-to-day -day level? As I've got older, I've started caring about older people's opinions more. Do you know what I mean? Because back in the day, it was, if an old 20 not this is not old <laughs> when i was 17 yeah at, when 26 year olds would say shit about me i was like that's just a bit embarrassing for you yeah, yeah, do you yeah. know what i'm saying why, but why now yeah exactly yeah. but now i'm 20 if so like a 30 30 year old says something mm. and it isn't a good comment i always act on it a lot more than i would have so i like to think that nowadays as i've matured my kind of the way I take opinions and take yeah. constructive criticism. You filter it a little yeah, bit exactly. And the way I take feedback is a lot more mature. Because back in the day, if I didn't want to hear something, I'd block it out. But now, if I know that it's something I need to work on, I'll do it. And through, and through these years, have there been moments of like feedback that you've got where you've gone, yeah, I need to change something fundamentally from a career perspective or on a personal level that's that's had a real impact in a good way for you? Definitely. I mean, I remember back in 2018, 19, when everything had just took off and it was like this new age of influence. So I'd just signed the Converse deal. A couple of people who were really close to me said like, this might be getting to you a little bit. Just little mm. things that you didn't used to do, you've started to do now. And as much as I hate saying that, because I'd never thought that, that would happen. Obviously, it's so it's so hard not for that to happen when everything was going so crazy. Mm. And that was, I remember just going back home to work and being like, whoa, how are these two people that... I really, really trust yeah, I really yeah. love and trust and been around me since the beginning said that and that really freaked me out a bit. So then mm. I just took a step back and kind of worked on that. So Instagram's your biggest channel and obviously, mm -hmm. as you say, it's been the home for most of what you've yeah. done uh, throughout your career. What is your view on Instagram at the minute? Like, how do you feel generally? I'd love to know, like, how do you feel generally about how social is right now and how it's changed, especially over the last few years? I think it's, I, I still love it. I think it's great. I just think that there is just so many there's just so much of everything right now. So like if mm. you want anything, there is literally a hundred influence you can look for how they've styled a jacket. And, <laughs> yeah. and I just think that's crazy yeah. how that's changed. Because back in the day, it was maybe three or four yeah. people who have done it. And especially with TikTok, even people who haven't been paid, they will buy the jacket and pretend it's an ad. That's, yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah. that's what's crazy. Yeah, that. you're right. Actually. Yeah, that's it, a, That is a massive thing. It's still an amazing place. And if you're, if you're someone who's looking inside and you don't and you just like fashion you don't post mm. things you are so lucky now because there's so much of everything but also for a creator i think it's got a lot harder so how do you look at that on a, on a personal level like strategically for you and what you're looking to do like what do you want to do kind of going mm -hmm. forward and how do the platforms and the way they've shaped kind of influence what you're thinking i was on the, another podcast as well we were talking a little bit about this but not in detail and it kind of made me realize like fashion is always it, I just I love it too much. You know what I mean, I wake up every day and I just think about what I'm going to wear next. Yeah. But at the same time, I think when I come on podcasts and do different kind of talky things, if ever it's a video or I present something, yeah, yeah. when I leave, the people are always like, "You need to go. You need to think about this." Because when we've done influence before, they've kind of sat there and been like, "I not know what to yeah, say yeah, next." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So 
definitely want to utilize TikTok more. Moving mm. to London, moving to London, it's kind of been a uh, move that I've done to be more in the in the, in the in, thick of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So you've been you, this whole time going back and forth, back and forth. Well. Yeah, but yeah, presenting, broadcasting, and kind of being more talky and out there is mm. definitely something I want to do now. If you could look at certain things that are out there and be like that would be sick I'd love to do it what, what stuff do you like and go that I would love to be involved in that it's so it's like it's a weird thing I don't think I've always wanted to have like a beat one show on Apple Music or something mm. like that just where I play my own tunes and talk about the week talk about what's going on but at the same time I love <laughs> I love like the presenty side of different like do you know like the little channel four things where they cover yeah, yeah. like fashion and like what's yeah. going on in fashion that week at award shows just something like that where I can still be myself mm. and talk about the things I love but in but also doing another thing at the same time, like yeah. TV. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So who do you look at who you think is doing great things? Like, who do you look at for inspiration? I will say someone like Maya Jama. I always look at her and I think mm. she is she is sick because yeah. even though she was never fashion, I think the mm. way that she has just constantly elevated herself to come on to the next yeah. thing. There's never been a point where anyone's been like, oh, what's she going to do? Because she's always on top. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. So she's good. Fashion wise, I always look at people like Tyler, the creator, and Pharrell, um, yeah. because the, as people, they just seem like they've got their head switched on. Yeah, they yeah. don't, they don't take shit from no one. Do you know what I'm mm. saying? And mm. at the same time, where he had his Converse thing, and maybe now his Converse shoe isn't doesn't have the same hype around it that it once did, but he's still elevating himself as an artist and still making amazing clothes. And there's never been that point of people like all. Oh, yeah, he, his, have his ideas come off now? Yeah, he, yeah. He like has has he had his good point in his brain with those mm. shoes? You know what I'm saying it's never been like that, and I think that's really inspiring. Hundred percent, hundred percent. It's like constantly reinventing or constantly. Yeah. It's almost not looking at the last thing, but what's next, exactly. right? And I think both of those guys are obviously, obviously, like the world's best in yeah. terms of constantly pushing to the next thing, the next thing. You know, and it's also like with him, what I love that he does is he enters very prominent new eras like chapters so yeah, like yeah, he has yeah. like his scumfuck flower boy album era where he was wearing fl floral tr like jumpsuits yeah, yeah, and yeah. like matching outfits and like matching yeah. hats to his shoes and then now he's in his new era where he has like briefcases with him and like wears a tie all yeah. the time in his do you know what I'm saying it's, there's just very yeah, yeah. obvious new eras and I love that because it's like he's mm. as a person a book and you can just look through his chapters and there's never mm. been one that I've looked at and been like this is yeah. shit yeah so You've been, obviously, as we said, it's been nearly seven years now. What have been the biggest, like, surprises for you going through this space? And what, what things have you noticed, or good and bad, that you would say to other people coming through, watch out for this, watch out for that, or this might come? I think one thing I always say is that no no one is really your friend, as you think. That's what I've realised in this industry. Obviously, you will have that circle of people that you can really trust, but there's always people I've said there's, I have a lot of like social friends so I'll see them on a night out and I know that the, the connection has to be there for the, yeah, yeah, for the yeah. circle but I know yeah. that if there was a, a burning fire in this building right now you are out of here like you're not even checking if I'm coming with you so definitely just I'll keep check, bro. yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so just keep an eye out for people I know it's a lot easier said than done like yeah, yeah. just people are all that's going to be the most blasé thing saying oh I don't trust anyone but seriously don't because mm. this industry is so competitive like a joke yeah it's you have to kind of know that there's going to be a circle that you can trust but beyond that you can't really mm. another thing is like I was saying with money is don't be stupid with it because it, you could just make no money for the rest of your life someone yeah. could come and take your spot tomorrow mm. save it invest it but at the same time reinvest into yourself and know that sometimes if you're spending money on something you're not always going to get a return but in the long run yeah. you know what I'm saying because yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of people that I've met who do it say if I've suggested going to a con like a on a holiday but like kind of like a content holiday where you take outfits and you do content there and it might mm. be a few grand they're like mm, no I don't want to do that but at the same time as sometimes you have to put money into something and not get yeah, yeah, yeah. Five times it back straight away. And yeah. That's something that my mum taught me back in the day. And what brands do you think are killing it? And especially on social, who do you look at and you go, yeah, they're they're really like winning in terms of galvanizing, getting hype, getting attention. In the same way, I don't think Supreme, there's, there isn't really anything like Supreme. Well, maybe like Cortez, I think, maybe or something. But yeah, I was going to say yeah, that. Yeah, but like much, what brands yeah. are like are doing it for you right now? I mean, for, for a brand I look at for 
for video inspo and mm. rollout inspo, Cortez is insane. I don't, I'm, I'm not, for me, the clothes aren't, I would never wear. I, I yeah. think he's great. Clint's amazing. Yeah. Um, they, it is a good, it is good clothes, but it's just not my style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cortez is just insane. Yeah. Like, I think you can, yeah, yeah. you can agree as well from your perspective. Yeah. And the way they roll things out there, campaign, mm. stuff like that, it's just incredible. Why do you, why do you think that, why do you think it, that's been such a success? Like, what do you think it is? Because my sense is like people have just followed this journey for so long. They're yeah. so invested in the brand's growth that it's like they feel like they're invested in the brand themselves. Exactly. And he, I think Clint is just someone you can watch and notice they actually came from nothing. And like, yeah, he came, yeah, yeah. literally just a normal guy. He's been grinding, like he's been doing it for ages. And like you said, it's been people who have been there from the start, even mm. people who haven't. Everyone feels like they've joined in at some part of the story and mm. now they're kind of they're in it do you know what yeah, I'm saying yeah, yeah. and the way that's so when they do like pop-up football challenges and stuff like that it's yeah. so engaging and involving where you feel like it is way more than a brand it's not just tracks yeah. like it's a massive community and I think that's so nice for kids who don't really have much to do or like don't feel like they because with Palace and Supreme you're not connected to it you no. just buy it because you like the look of it do yeah. you know what I'm saying but yeah. I think for kids can go to a drop and hit a crossbar and then get the pair of shoes and the story's there yeah, do you know what I'm ten, saying yeah 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 10 year old kid he hit yeah, it and got the yeah. shoes and everyone's just going crazy yeah yeah for sure and I guess it's also a sign that you know personality brands people being at the heart of product is so important now and actually you know you talked about Pharrell Tyler yeah. Pharrell being at LV Tyler and Converse like I think you know some of the some of the bigger people in the states have been ahead of the curve there but even like Supreme doesn't really have a personality no, driving it not. and maybe that's partly why they haven't endured in the same way in terms of relevance because there's no people connect to people don't they yeah. people have connected to Clint so much because yeah, he's, he's just A he's a super captivating and interesting guy but he's he is he is Cortez Cortez is him right? yeah. so you're buying into him and therefore the brand I, I think that I was going to say that as well he's a massive part of why it's so big as well because he yeah. has this kind of like if you read his story sometimes these stuff he posts is just so savage he's yeah. just this like, he takes, like the screenshots this, yeah goes, biggest like... character ever like someone will be like can I get a free thing he's like no like, yeah. work for it like it's just funny he's just like he's just yeah. got this mad persona that feels that is so interesting I'll find myself sometimes searching his name yeah, yeah. to look at his stories because I'm like what what has this guy done today? Because it's always something new. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've lived almost, I think, many lives yeah. in this short <laughs> space of seven years. Obviously, a big, big chunk of your life. Um, you've done so many different things. Like, what matters to you now? Like, what are your, what are your big priorities? Would you say, personally and professionally? Personally, I think I've matured a lot now. Like, I'm in a relationship. Like, I've no. There's a lot more to life than just clothes and Instagram. And I've noticed that over the last. Mm two years properly I've noticed that so for me it's more about keeping my head on and maturing in a way that I'm, I don't want to mature it's so hard to explain I've always said this, I don't want to mature as like a man through through fashion if, yeah. if you kind of get what I'm yeah, saying yeah. I want to do it as as like a normal person because otherwise I feel like I'm going to be a completely different person than what I want to be so keeping my head on is a massive thing as much yeah. as I can but at the same time keeping my work ethic and um, where do you find professionally where do you find your mo the most enjoyment for yourself at the minute for me at the moment i think things like like things like this podcast and going to meet people and yeah. doing more like i say presenting just more things where i'm actually talking and getting a point across or like reading a script or reading something like that just where yeah. i'm actually putting my brain to a lot more use because as i've got older i want to do more than just put an outfit together and take mm. a photo do you know what i'm saying i think mm. that's I knew that was going to happen because when I was 16, 17, my brain wasn't fully developed. So that's pretty much, I didn't yeah, just yeah, have yeah. that in me, but that's what my brain wanted to do. If you were a creator coming through in fashion today, what would be your plan for that person? What would you say strategically they should be doing? Where should they be starting? What channels should they be on? And what would be the way to get success, do you think? I think if you want to start doing fashion content now, TikTok, just post on TikTok, definitely. But at the same time, put a lot don't just go on to instagram and post your tiktoks in mm -hmm. my opinion i think if you're doing sick tiktok content blow up on there if people follow through and see you're posting just as good on your instagram they'll also follow because what i find mad is sometimes i'll come across three million follower tiktok in yeah, account yeah. and they'll have like Nothing. fifteen thousand yeah. instagram followers but then i go on their content and it's just the video posted again so i think for me That's if really i was point. yeah if i was just coming through definitely 
you have to grind a lot harder now. I think you have yeah. to do like people say, what like six TikToks a day? That's mental. How? <laughs> that's mean, just your whole. That's just your whole life. When I people speak, really are people when, still doing that. Yeah, when, when I speak with, they're like, yeah, yeah, like five a day minimum. I'm Oof. like, how when do you, how do you eat? live? Yeah. yeah, what do you do? I mean, editing alone. That's yeah, like a, what half an hour edit? Maybe yeah. Alone. So maybe like. A TikTok a day, a great yeah. show, a great outfit, style a great mm-hmm. outfit, but at the same time, go and take a photo in that outfit afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But definitely don't get me wrong, like you might post an Instagram, a TikTok on Instagram and it blows up some yeah, yeah, reels, yeah. but at the same you time. You can't rely on that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just now, because people just want to see so much content and mm. like there's just so much of everything, just post as much as you can. Yeah. But dif- differentiate over different platforms. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Last few questions. Firstly, where do you see the future of the creator economy going? Oh God, I mean, budget's definitely not <laughs> where it used to have as high as it used to be because there's so many people. But I, I reckon it's always gonna, it's always gonna be crazy when you put it into perspective what mm. people do for certain amount and then what creators do for half an hour and get it. So I don't think yeah. that's gonna go anywhere because influence some people has is crazy. Mm. So people will pay the right price for that. But I think it will only just get bigger. More people will start getting into the scene. But at a point, there has to be where like they're an influencer can't just come up and blow up because there's just yeah. going to be so much of everything. So I think it will become a lot quicker as as quick as it is now. I reckon it will also yeah. speed up. People will come, they'll go. More people Can will come up. More? Yeah, yeah, exactly. There'll always be those few people that you can look at, whether it's Tyler or something like that. Yeah. Like there's people who are now there. You kind of transcend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. But sure. there'll also just be below that a massive come go come go do you yeah. know what I'm saying like yeah, a little, yeah. like a it's also like there's this strands and this tears to it it's mm-hmm. not as simple as everyone's going to be in that sort of bubble actually and maybe the differentiating factor is having that creativity yeah. that really breaks you out so that yeah. you're not dependent on audience per se you're more dependent on your own output because yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're probably great example. obviously they're, they're, they're mm-hmm. huge but that's because they're so creative and yeah. they are so innovative yeah, yeah. it kind of doesn't matter who's following or who's watching what because you might jump in and then jump out and then come back in as I think a lot of people do but also at the same time I think when we're saying they're so creative they do have a lot of money yeah, to yeah. put into their things <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying and that's like <laughs> Cre- that's, creativity yeah, costs yeah, yeah like, exactly <laughs> like when you watch like Pharrell music videos yeah, like, was, yeah. he has millions of pounds to throw at that Some, yeah. another person might only have a, a hundred pounds for sure so just showing because people love to see that you've done what you can with what you have mm. so I mean I saw um La- Lava Lava LaRue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did a music video recently mm. on I can't I don't even know what it was, but on her TikTok she showed uh there was a comment that said this must have had a massive budget though, lol. And she showed how she did it for like 250 pounds and it oh, was wow. fucking really good. Yeah. yeah. The video was sick and she showed how she pulled favors in from everyone. She used her like uh, she used some like a vape on one of the scenes to look like a smoke <laughs> machine. machine. Like yeah. it was crazy how she did it, but it looked mm. really high budget. And I think using what you have, people love to see that. Yeah. And if you do make an amazing music video for a hundred quid, fucking prove it mm. because people mm. will be like, people will hate on that. And it's also really inspiring for creators who don't have so much money. Yeah, to do. for sure. Yeah. And what's uh, one piece of advice that you would give to a young creator starting today in any space? Strap in. Strap in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be a long ride. Uh, no. I mean, that's probably good advice, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. It, it is not easy. Yeah. I think, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate on it so it doesn't just seem vague, but I think if I see a lot of comments on even mine and my mm. friends' things where it's like, how they come onto TikTok or they make a YouTube video and they have a little rant about how tired they are or exhausted and creators are like, you literally take a photo and get paid 15 grand. But it it isn't that it isn't that easy because you, the hate you get and the things people expect of you and they know you're making a bit of money yeah. or know you have a following, you'll have old friends come back to you when you have clout. And that's and as much funny as that is, it's also bit horrible because mm. you're like wow these people are just coming back now they don't even want me mm. and I think it does get into your head so you need to come into it with a strong head because a lot of things go behind the scenes that you don't see yeah. that, that hard yes yeah really good advice mm-hmm. and lastly who is the creator that you're loving at the minute <laughs> this is a really random one and I don't know if you're gonna know them but <laughs> I hope they I hope they do um Bailey J Mills on TikTok do you know her do you know well it's him but he does like he's like do you know Chris Lilly yeah the guy who made Summer yeah, High yeah, Tie. Yeah. They are like the <laughs> they the, like the modern day Chris Lilly, they make me laugh. Fashion wise, the Duke and Dexter boys, they're my yeah, friend, yeah. but they the content they put out is incredible. Yeah, when I've been amazing. on trips with them, I'm not even just saying that because we, I go away with them. The way they kind of make their content now is mm. insane. It's just so it feels so like homegrown. It feels so 
yeah, well, family yeah, touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's just really nice to watch. Um, Amy Leon Door, I love their, mm. the way they promote their content. It's kind of a bit like Cortez. Yeah. I'll always say Clint, even for style, Clint's great. Like the way he styles stuff. Um, Tyler Farrell, love them till the day I die fashion wise. Amazing. Well, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. 